Hey babies, welcome back to another Deck Tech and Modern League video, and this week we're playing some Boros slash Jeskai Fiddlebender. This list was piloted to a third place finish in a modern challenge by Bbot Online, right after a new card from Dominaria, Sarah Paragon, became legal in the format. So full credit to them for the deck list, and let's get into the deck tech. Starting off, this is a Yorion deck, so we're playing 80 cards, and Yorion is in our companion zone, giving us a little bit of additional value from our permanence with ETBs. The core cards of this decklist are 4 copies of Goblin Engineer, 4 copies of Oswald Fiddlebender, and 4 copies of Stoneforge Mystic. Goblin Engineer says when it enters the battlefield we may search our library for an artifact card, put that card into our graveyard, and then shuffle. And it has an ability where we can pay a red and tap it, sacrifice an artifact, and return an artifact card with CMC 3 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Fiddlebender says that we can pay a white, tap it, and sacrifice an artifact to search our library for an artifact card with one more mana value and put it into play. And Stoneforge Mystic says when it enters the battlefield we may search our library for an equipment card and put it into our hand, and it has an ability where we can pay one in a white, tap it, and put an equipment from our hand onto the battlefield. For our other creatures, we're playing four copies of Esper Sentinel, either taxing our opponent's non-creature spells or giving us a little card advantage, and four copies of Ragavan, giving us a little bit of card advantage and ramp, one copy of Hope of Gearper, which we can sacrifice to stop our opponent from casting non-creature spells for a turn, one copy of Rabbit Battery, which we can reconfigure to give our other creatures haste, one copy of Bray's Apprentice, which can give us a little bit of card advantage and also produce tokens. Four copies of Sarah Paragon, which is the new card and kind of mimics Crucible of Worlds, but also lets us cast permanent cards with CMC 3 or less from our graveyard. And also gives us a little bit of incidental life gain. And one copy of Crackdown Construct, which says whenever we activate an ability of an artifact or creature that isn't a mana ability, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn and gives us a way to deal infinite damage when it's paired with another card in our deck. We're playing four copies of Portable Hole and two copies of Galvanic Blast as removal. And then we have a whole bunch of one of non-creature artifacts for our toolbox. Going through that really quickly, we have one copy of Aether Spellbomb, one copy of Pithing Needle, one copy of Pyrite Spellbomb, one Shadow Spear, one Soul Guide Lantern, one Springleaf Drum, one copy of Lightning Greaves, which is the card that gives us infinite damage with Crackdown Construct, one Sword of the Meek, and one Thopter Foundry, which go together. One Crucible of Worlds, one Halo Fountain, which we can use to untap Fiddlebender and also gives us an alternate win con, one Nettle Cyst, and then at the top of our curve and the best things that we can get with Stoneforge Mystic, one copy of Batter Skull, one Embercleave, and one Culture Complete. In our mana base, we have four copies of Urza's Saga to make constructs and give us another way to search through our deck, two copies of Darksteel Citadel, which we can sacrifice to Fiddlebender to search out our one drops. For fetch lands, we're playing four copies of Arid Mesa, four Flooded Strands, and four Scalding Tarns. Our shocks are two Sacred Foundries, one Hollowed Fountain, and one Steam Vents. We're playing one Rogren Trium as another fetchable land, and four copies of Inspiring Vantage to give us fast Boros colored mana. And finally, we're playing two basic planes and one basic mountain. In our sideboard, we have two copies of Burnt and Forged Ender for red decks, one copy of Spell Pierce, mostly for combo decks, two copies of Cathar Commando as a way to blow up artifacts and enchantments, one Damping Sphere for Tron, Amulet, and Storm style combo, one Ratchet Bomb, mostly for blowing up tokens, one Unlicensed Hearse for some more graveyard hate, four copies of Teferi Time Raveler for Cascade and Counterspell decks, and one Mystical Dispute for blue decks. And that's the deck list. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments. I've had a lot of fun learning how to play this deck. It's very difficult because of all the amount of actions that you can take during a game and how often you get to tutor, but I think that's also what makes it so fun. So let's get into the games. All right, round one with Fiddlebender. We won the die roll. We will reveal Yorion, since we are playing with a Pokemon. And let's evaluate this hand. We don't have a Monkey or an Esper Sentinel for turn one, but we are playing 80 cards, so we're not always going to have that. This goes turn one, Springleaf Drum, turn two, Stoneforge Mystic, maybe Blast something. And then we have a Halo Fountain, which is a little bit awkward. But Stoneforge Mystic gives us a plan, and Galv Blast gives us some interaction, so I think we keep this. Plus we have enough lands that we can reasonably ca uh, cast most of, the, most of the things in our deck. Let's see. Let's just go... Basic Planes... Springleaf Drum. Pass. Alright, what is our opponent playing? They're not playing a Companion. They play Urza's Saga. And Springleaf Drum. We're playing against Affinity, perhaps? That would make sense. Shock and Sacred Foundry down to 18. Put Stoneforge into play, yes. Let's go ahead and get Cauldra and pass. I'd rather keep up Galv Blast than cast the Shadow Spear here, I think. Sea Crumb Coast. So it could be Blue-White Affinity, and it could be Hammer Time currently. Mm. 
Ginger Brute still could be either of those. Goes to combat. Hmm. Should I go ahead and Galf Blast the Ginger Brute? Probably not. If it is Hammer Time, I want to have Instant Speed Interaction, I think. Although this way they could get a Construct, and if we... Yeah, we can play around them being able to get a Construct by killing this Ginger Brute here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll see if they have any interaction, like a Metallic Rebuke or Spell Pierce or something. They do not. Fantastic. We draw Aether Spell Bomb. Not bad. Let's put Cauldra into play. Okay. Attack for five. Okay. And we already have blue mana from Springleaf Drum, so I'm just going to get a basic mountain here to conserve my life total a little bit. Play Aether Spellbomb. What you got, opponent? They might get an Aether Spellbomb of their own to bounce the germ. They get Shadow Spear. Okay. Still could be either of those decks. Very inconclusive plays so far. If they play an Artifact Land or a Pure Steel Paladin or something, we'll know. Sword of Fire and Ice. Alright, definitely a Hammer Time deck. Gonna place Ornithopter. Passes. We draw Lion Sash. Hmm. So I think here we just go Shadow Spear, equip onto the Germ, combat for six, holding up Aether Spellbomb. We gain six up to 23, our opponent's down to nine, and we'll see what they have. Opponent ticks up their Urza Saga to two. Opponent equips Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay. Place Ink Moth Nexus. Okay. Hmm. Let's go ahead and bounce here. Just so they don't get the Sophie trigger. And because they don't have white mana, they can't protect their creature with blacksmith skill at this point. Opponent plays Ornithopter again. Plays Esper Sentinel. Okay. We draw our own Esper Sentinel. That's not bad. What can we do here? Probably just attack for seven, right? So better to re-equip Shadow Spear on the Stoneforge Mystic. I don't really think so. I might actually leave back Stoneforge Mystic so I can put Lion Sash into play. So let's just attack for six here. When it goes down to three, we play Esper Sentinel. We pass. Okay. So we can play Lion Sash with Stoneforge. We can eat one thing to give it a plus one, plus one counter. And then we can eat more on my turn, possibly. Opponent gets their Colossus Hammer. Do they have a Pure Steel Paladin? They equip Sword of Fire and Ice. It does not look like they have Pure Steel. So the Colossus Hammer isn't actually doing anything here. We're going to get to draw an extra card and shock a thing. 
we take two down to 27. Opponent gets the Sophie trigger, targeting Esper Sentinel, that's fine. And they gotta have something, otherwise they're just dead. Maybe they're looking to have drawn their Pure Steel Paladin so they can play Colossus Hammer and then block the Trample guy. But in that scenario, their Paladin dies, or is exiled rather. They play land. What could they have here? They equip Esper Sentinel, okay. That's still not enough to get you out of the dead range. All right, I'm gonna put Lion Sash into play just in case. but hopefully it doesn't matter. They could possibly have like a dispatch or something. Hmm. I move Shadow Spear over. Uh, okay, our opponent just concedes. That's fine. Okay. So we're playing against Hammer Time. What do we want to bring in? Cathar Commando for sure. Ratchet Bomb, probably. Void Mirror, probably decent. Spell Pierce, yes. Forge Tender, no. Unlicensed Hearse, no. Damping Sphere, no. Mystic Dispute, no. Teferi's maybe. Teferi seems kind of weird. The issue with Teferi in this matchup is although stopping them from flashing things in is good, or maybe playing like a spell pierce or something here or there, Teferi's not very good tempo against them because they can usually just recast their stuff really easily since their curve stops at two for the most part. Hmm. What do we want to take out? We can take out Lion Sash. We can take out Soul Guide Lantern pretty easy. Hope of Gear Per probably comes out too. Yeah, let's take out Hope. Let's bring in Ratchet Bomb. Because hitting zero against their constructs would be pretty good. Void Mirror basically just counters their. Ornithopters, and since they are playing Blue White Affinity, they're probably not playing Memnites, so I don't think we need Void Mirror. And let's cut. I'd say Crucible of Worlds, since it's more geared towards a longer game plan than we actually want to have against them. And let's see if there's anything we want to take out for Two Fairies. Brea's Apprentice, maybe. Uh, we don't want to take down the combo, really. We don't want to take out Crackdown Construct. Uh, I like having Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry against pretty much everything, just because it's a decent option. So I think I'm just going to do it like this and not worry about the Teferis here. If our opponent plays a bunch of counter spells or something post board, we can think about Teferis. It's good for dealing with like Urza Saga and their constructs. But other than that, it's not that fantastic in this matchup, I don't think. Alright, so we have Ragavan and basically nothing else in this hand. Uh, Ragavan is really good, but I think they're going to have blockers as the issue, and we don't have any removal, so let's mulligan. Alright, we have Urza Saga, Goblin Engineer, Scalding Tarn, Springleaf Drum, Crackdown Construct, and Lightning Greaves. So I think I get rid of Brea's Apprentice here, because we have the wombo combo already, and we just try to go for that. That's insanely lucky that we just drew <laughs> the two one-of cards that are infinite damage. It's very unlikely to happen. What do we want to get with this Goblin Engineer? Usually my go-to when I'm not sure is Sword of the Meek. But maybe Portable Hole, so we have Removal. Maybe Ratchet Bomb. Hmm. Part of what's so difficult about this 
deck, in my opinion, is on top of having tons of activated abilities, so you always have options of things to do with your mana, and there's always different lines you can take. There's also 16 cards that tutor, so the amount of lines available is always very very open and very confusing for me. <laughs> At least when I'm trying to assess a hand uh, early in the game like this one. Opponent plays land, spring life drum. Okay. What do we draw? I'd kind of like to draw land. I'd also like to draw removal. It's sort of unfortunate that we happen to have Springleaf Drum already because that means Urza Saga can't get us mana when it pops. And we need to get up to four mana for the Crackdown Construct. So we'll see, I guess. Urza Saga could be getting us one of the Spell Bombs for removal or could be getting us a Pithing Needle, possibly. Goblin Engineer can also get either removal or possibly like Sword of the Meek if we think we're going to be making 1-1s one or if we draw a Thopter Foundry for sure. Alright, our opponent is, okay, now going to let us play. Let's go Arid Mesa, get a Sacred Foundry, down to 17, play Springleaf Drum. Okay. Do I think they're going to have removal brought in against me? Because I could just play out the Crackdown Construct and then Lightning Greaves the turn after. But it's probably better to just run out the Lightning Greaves so they're not expecting the Construct attacking in. Hmm. We will see. What does our opponent have for turn two, I wonder? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and, while our opponent's doing this, pull up the list. So I can just keep in mind what we have as options. All right, it looks like our opponent played something. They played a Plains. They play Pure Steel Paladin. Okay. And another Spring Leaf Drum. Three cards in their hand, no equipments currently. We draw Brea's Apprentice. Hmm. I probably want to play Urza's Saga here so it pops a bit sooner. Brea's Apprentice means we can get a 1-1, one -one, so we could get back... Sword of the Meek if we put it in the graveyard, and then Sword of the Meek is a free thing that we can sacrifice for Goblin Engineer to do shenanigans with that. I probably want to play Lightning Greaves on turn three and then Crackdown Construct on turn four, which means I wouldn't be getting any constructs with Urza's Saga, unfortunately. So I might want to wait on the Saga in case that doesn't work out. What could Saga tutor that would make it worthwhile? I still think Pithing Needle is a decent option. Aether's Ball Bomb could keep us alive too. Let's go ahead and play Saga. Okay. Let's play Goblin Engineer. Okay. Yes. And let's get... What? Ratchet Bomb's not bad either, because putting it on one could blow up a lot of their stuff. Portable Hole could be decent. Hmm. Actually, yeah, let's get Portable Hole. 
That could give us instant speed interaction to keep us alive next turn after we play Lightning Greaves, because we would be going land, Lightning Greaves, go. And our opponent, if they do go for a kill on us, which they might be since they're probably getting Colossus Hammer here, we'll be able to hold up swapping out an artifact for Portable Hole and getting rid of whatever creature or equipment I need to. Hmm. I'm going to place Colossus Hammer. I assume they're going to go attacking here. Yes. Opponent attacks for 12. We will take it, because this Goblin Engineer is worth it, I believe. They move over Colossus Hammer. Makes sense. It does look like I'm going to be getting Pithing Needle with this, uh, or is this Saga? We draw a portable hole. Interesting. That's actually really nice for us. Okay. But what does that mean? I could go Bray's Apprentice. Get a chump blocker. That delays our combo for a full turn. I could play Lightning Greaves, play Portable Hole. Let's go ahead and crack Scalding Tarn. Get a basic Mountain, because we don't want to just die to regular combat damage. I could go Portable Hole, make a Construct, possibly. Opponent has three cards in hand. It's not very likely that they have another Colossus Hammer. Is it better to portable hole their Pure Steel Paladin or their Hammer here? Let's get... Let's take the Paladin. Play Lightning Greaves. Because I think I do want to go for the combo. This way we have a possible Chomp Blocker and we can also swap out Portable Hole for the other Portable Hole as a combat trick. It doesn't actually uh, remove an extra thing from play, it just swaps out what's in play. Why didn't I equip... Goblin Engineer with Lightning Greaves, that was stupid. Uh, so if we draw a land, we can get Crackdown Construct into play. I think what I want to do is... Block? Okay. And then go Goblin Engineer, Portable Hole. Oh, I can't do it. Shit. Oh my god, I'm stupid. I thought I would have a mana and also the activated ability of Goblin Engineer. Well, now I definitely can't do the combo because I don't have an extra creature. So that's annoying. So what do I do here? Kind of plays Teferi. That's annoying. Bounces Lightning Greaves. Interesting. I kind of would have thought they would have hit our portable hole there. Well, that was a, definitely a misplay on my part. I'm going to see if I can cobble together something again. They play Sigarda Zade. That makes sense why they don't care about the pure steel. Hmm. We draw Aether Spell Bomb. That's not bad. Pirate Spell Bomb, Pithing Needle, Shadow Spear. Let's get Pithing Needle. Let's name Colossus Hammer. Just so they can't re-equip it in the future. Because they already have free equips on everything else. We have to dodge them getting Shadow Spear.
we have to play Bray's Apprentice here. And then hope that chump blocking is enough for at least a moment. They only have one creature that can attack right now. They could play Ginger Brute, make it unblockable, and then also put a hammer on it, but then that's quite a few cards that they have to just happen to have that they haven't tutored for. So hopefully they just don't have Shadow Spear, is what we're rooting for right now. All right, we get to Chump Block. Alive for another turn, fantastic. Now we can play Aether Spellbomb next turn. Hopefully we draw a land so we're closer to getting Crackdown Construct into play. Okay, Bray's Apprentice could give us an extra look at a card possibly. Portable Hole, that's a good draw. Okay. What does this mean for us? Because I can go Portable Hole, Lightning Greaves. Let's see if Hole resolves. Play it on Stoneforge Mystic. Let's go ahead and play Lightning Greaves. I think we have to play aggressively here, because we're not going to be able to hold them back forever. They should only have one hasty creature in their deck, and they still need to have an equipment to put on top of it as well. They're flooding out pretty hard too, so we're getting lucky as far as that goes. They're going to be able to use Teferi next turn. We didn't draw land. That's unfortunate. We could draw land but we won't have a blocker if we get rid of Portable Hole here, and we also wouldn't have Springleaf Drum up anymore. We can attack Teferi for two, which I think is what we're going to have to do with with this uh, Bray's Apprentice. Let's play Aether Spellbomb. Attack Teferi. Feels a little goofy, but it's what's happening. And pass. I think I'm going to... Pop this Aether Spellbomb to draw a card, most likely. Another land for our opponent, my god. I would be pissed if I was playing Hammer Time and drew this many lands. We're getting very lucky here, I'm not gonna say that that's not true. Okay, we found Sacred Foundry. I think we gotta just go for it. So we're passing Lightning Greaves back and forth. You need Crackdown Construct, Lightning Greaves, and at least one other creature to do this because you can't re-equip Lightning Greaves to a creature that's already equipped with Lightning Greaves because it has Shroud. But because Greaves gives Construct haste, it doesn't matter what order you play these cards in. And we'll see if they have removal. Okay, opponent concedes. Sweet. All right. Lucky start. Very lucky. We probably should have... We definitely should have won that sec uh, lost that second game, rather. But, uh... My god, they flooded out. All right, I'll see you in the next one. All right, round two with Fiddlebender. We won the die roll again. We reveal Yorion as our companion. And what do we have? We have one land. Lots of stuff to do, but only one land. Uh, we could rely on Esper Sentinel to try to draw a second one, but I don't think that that's a very good game plan. So let's mulligan. Alright, this is reasonable. We'll have three lands, a portable hole, an Esper Sentinel, and a Goblin Engineer. So that gives us some interaction and early play that might give us some card advantage and a line that we can do with Goblin Engineer. So let's keep, get rid of... Hmm. Let's just get rid of one of the fetches since we already have a Sacred Foundry. Plains, Esper Sentinel go. Hopefully our opponent will let us draw some extra cards with this Esper Sentinel, but we will see. Opponent plays Flooded Strand. They're not playing a companion. We draw Ragavan. Interesting. I might just want to dash Ragavan here rather than playing Goblin Engineer. Yeah, I think that's fine, because then if they remove the Ragavan, they 
are letting me draw a card with Esper Sentinel, so I'm getting card advantage either way. And I get a little bit of ramp off this Ragavan, possibly. Watery Grave, down to 17. Fatal pushes Ragavan, we get to draw a card, haha. -ha. <laughs> we still got a two for one. So it looks like our opponent is playing an Esper or Blue-Black deck. Possibly Mill, based on what we've seen so far. It doesn't look like a Shadow deck since they played a Basic there, which Shadow doesn't have a lot of. And since they're not playing a Giganta as their companion. So I'm guessing this is Mill. Uh, being an 80-card deck against Mill is certainly nice. Uh, we have a lot of 1 and 2 drops though, so Tasha's is still going to be decent against us. Let's go to combat. I should have played out Rabbit Battery this turn, that was stupid. Oh well. Could have been attacking for more, but... I'm too much of a fool. Yeah, because I actually I could have been attacking for three this turn, because I could have gone Goblin Engineer, get my Sword of the Meek, put in Rabbit Battery, equip it. Play Saga. Actually, I couldn't have played Rabbit Battery this turn if I was playing Saga anyway, so that's fine. Okay. Yes. And I am going to get Sword of the Meek here. Pass the turn. An Archive traps us. They are playing Mill. Do they pay one? They do not. They give us a Pithing Needle. Okay. They milled Embercleave, Lightning Greaves, Oswald Fiddlebender, Sarah Paragon, Esper Sentinel, Goblin Engineer, Crucible of Worlds, and a bunch of lands. Fractured Identity, okay. We go down to 52 cards in our deck. It's as if we drew an opening hand from a regular size deck at this point. They got another Sarah Paragon, a Galv Blast, and a Springleaf Drum. They play Field of Ruin. I assume they're going to hit Urza's Saga now with that. They do, okay. We get our basic planes because they milled the mountain. We play Visions of Beyond. We get to draw a card. Okay. Okay. Inspiring Vantage, not very exciting. But we can play Rabbit Battery. Okay, yes. Get back Sword of the Meek. Play... Scalding Tarn, fetch, get Hollowed Fountain so we have blue mana in case we need it. Go to combat for three. And I'm going to show you a, a kind of neat thing next turn. But now I think I just want to go Pithing Needle. Hmm. I thought I had red mana up again. I'm just misplaying all the time here apparently. Let's go ahead and hit Field of Ruin. So they can't do that more since we're out of basics. And pass. Since I got the Hollowed Fountain, I didn't have the red mana that I needed for Goblin Engineer. Because I'm a dumb dumb. But oh well. Hmm. We're still in a decent spot here just because we have so many damn cards in our deck. Opponent plays Visions. Do they pay one? They do not. They give us a Ragavan. Okay. Plays Hedron Crab. Plays Oboro. That gives us a, a uh, target for our portable hole, at least, so that's kind of nice. And they didn't have a fetch land either, or a second Hedron Crab. Drown the lock on Engineer, that's annoying. Okay. So let's go... Portable hole. Get rid of the crab. Dash the monkey. Go to combat. Attack with the boys. Okay. Surgical extraction. Interesting. 
I think we should cast that. And we don't care about our life total either, so let's just go... Should we get rid of all the archive traps, I think, or all the drown in the locks? I don't think I care that much about fatal push, and I don't care that much about fracture insanity, I don't think. Let's get rid of their archive traps. Pay life. They have Drown in the Lock, Drown in the Lock. We should, definitely should have hit that. Tasha City's Laughter, Spell Pierce, and Fractured Sanity. Unfortunate. They have a couple Archmage's Charms in their deck. And of course they have, other than that, regular mill stuff. Alright. Let's just go... Hmm... Should I put Yorion into my hand here? I don't think it matters. Let's just play Inspiring Vantage and pass. Ragavan back to hand. Opponents at 7. They do have a decent amount of interaction. They have a Drown on the Lock, another Drown on the Lock, and a Spell Pierce. And other than that, a bunch of mill. Okay. We drew another Ragavan, that's not bad. Let's dash one, see if they counter it. That would be kind of nice. They do not. Let's move Sword of the Meek over so that it's a bit harder for them to pay for the Esper Sentinel tax. Found it. Drown in the Locks, Ragavan. Okay. They let us draw a card. So that's kind of bizarre that they did that in response to the Sword of the Meek re-equip. But okay. Uh, let's dash Ragavan again. Because we can. Opponent. Fractured Sanities gets our Sacred Foundry. I think that runs, a, runs us out of uh, fetchable lands since our deck is a little bit light on those. Attack for five, put our opponent down to two. Sure, I'll play a Ruin Crab, why not? Why not? <laughs> At this point, make our opponent mill a bit, pick up Ragaban. Now we're the mill deck. <laughs> opponent plays Tasha's, I assume they let us draw a card. We have 36 cards in our deck, they mill 9 with Tasha's, and I think that just makes them dead. Because I think we can deal 2 damage pretty easy. Hooray! Alright. What do we do sideboard against them? I think Teferi is definitely correct. Uh, Void Mirror probably is good. Mystical Dispute for sure, Spell Pierce for sure. Damping Sphere, not really. Definitely not Burrington Forge Tender. Probably not Cathar Commando. They might bring in uh, Ensnaring Bridges, but the Fairy can, ar can already kind of deal with that, and also most of our creatures have pretty low power, so we can deal with it that way. Ratchet Bomb might be good because it hits all their one drops. If they have a lot of those, that is. Let's see, what do we take out? The Graveyard Interaction is good. The Spot Removal for the Crabs is good. Crucible's not bad. I think Batter Skull I can take out pretty easy. What do I take out against them? There's just a lot of very good cards. <laughs> hmm. I think I take out Rabbit Battery. Soul Guide Lantern hits their graveyard, which isn't particularly important, so I think I cut that. I might want Unlicensed first to protect myself from surgical effects. Let's cut Nettle Cyst. Let's cut... Um, Pithing Needle's fine. Pirate Spell Bomb. 
If there's small one, we can cut. Lion Sash I like because it can protect me from surge goals. Embercleave is useful because it lets us trample over their stuff. I think we cut Shadow Spear because we already have other trample effects. And I think I'm just going to do it like that. Most of the other cards seem at least fine. And I don't want to cut a lot of the high-end stuff because it gives us... Because they give us a fast way to win the game, but they also give us a way to stop Tasha's from milling a ton of cards from us. Like if our opponent gets un uh, unlucky and hits a 6 and a 7 or something like that in a single go. It's pretty fortunate for us. Hmm. I think there's definitely an argument for unlicensed hearse. Because they do have cards that care about how many cards are in our graveyard. This hand doesn't really do anything. It plays a portable hole and then it waits a really long time, so let's mulligan. This is a one lander. I don't like that it's a one lander. But it does have a decent amount of interaction. We're up a game and on the draw. Let's try it out. Play the one lander. Uh, let's get rid of Pyrite Spellbomb since we already have a couple pieces of removal and I don't want to get rid of either Oswald or Goblin Engineer here. Let's see what our opponent does. They play... Ruin Crab on one. Looks like we're playing a portable hole. We drew Monkey, that's not bad. Uh, if we draw a land to dash it, that would be fantastic. If not, I guess we'll see what happens. All right, come on, land off the top, please. Opponent plays another Ruin Crab, mills us for three with a Flooded Strand. They do not crack the Flooded Strand yet. We draw Sword of the Meek, unfortunate. Uh, we can't kill this Ruin Crab, so we might as well just play Goblin, uh, not Goblin, Ragavan here. And I am already being punished by this One Lander. <laughs> I was so good mulliganing the One Lander last game. And yet here we are again. Punnet mills us again, hitting Pithy Needle in a couple lands. They don't have a second crab, so that's pretty good for us. But having crabs at all makes their clock significantly faster. Alright, so what I'm hoping for here is, of course I want to draw land, but other than that, I want to attack in, have them block with the crab, because of course, rather than just removing the ragavan, and then I can kill the crab with galvanic blast. Okay. Please don't have a counterspell. They could easily drown in the lock this. That would make me sad. They do drown in the locket. Okay. Well, we have an Esper Sentinel to play now, at least, that might give us some extra draws. They have three cards in hand. They play Polluted Delta, milling us for six. All right, they've got three cards. We have 53 cards in our deck, so we're still in a decent spot, of course. Hmm. Let's go to combat. Back with the monkey. They do block. We're not going to punish them for it. I just wanted to see if they would block or not. Play Esper Sentinel. All right, our opponent has milled a lot of our lands. <laughs> so I don't know how soon we're going to be able to draw one. But we'll see, I guess. They cycle Fractured Sanity. That one doesn't hit any lands at all. Opponent. Place Drown the Lock on Esper Sentinel. Okay. We'd love to draw a Portable Hole. We'd love to draw land. Let's see what, if any, of that actually happens. We draw an Esper Sentinel. Let's play Esper Sentinel. Ah. <sighs> They have four lands now, so they can just kind of pay for the Esper Sentinel pretty easily. Let's pass. Not in a good spot, even though we have a ton of cards still in our deck. Definitely need at least two lands to make this deck work, I would say. <laughs> Although maybe that should have been obvious for me. 
Lots of two drops stuck in our hand now. So they did bring in bring in ensnaring bridge. That's actually good information for us. They've only milled one of our Teferis. They fatal push our guy. We draw Arid Mesa. Okay. Let's go ahead and get Steam Vents. Play Lightning Greaves. So we can protect Fiddlebender once it comes into play. They archive trap us. They only had the one though. Have we seen Thopter Foundry yet? We have not. Kind of plays visions. Three cards in their hand. They feel to ruin us. We don't have any basics anymore. That sucks. Because they hit both of our planes with that one. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Land off the top, maybe? I don't want to count the lands in my graveyard because I'm afraid of not having more lands in my deck. <laughs> it looks like there's at least a couple more Urza Sagas. Draw Flooded Strand. Are there any fetchable lands at all? We will see. There was a fetchable land. All right. That's something, I guess. It's not much, but it is something. Hmm. Opponent has milled all of our Teferis. So I think our hope is getting Fiddlebender into play. Please resolve. Equip Lightning Greaves. Please resolve. All right. The Fiddlebender is safe. We cannot activate him this turn since we don't have the mana. Hmm. We have 24 cards in deck. They play land, milling us for three. They hit Cauldra, Springleaf Drum, Halo Fountain. Opponent plays Archive Trap, milling us a bunch more. We have eight cards in our deck now. What can we do from here? I can't imagine much. <laughs> Let's play Sword of the Meek and pass. I don't want to sacrifice this portable hole if I can help it. Don't place Tasha's and we're dead. All right. Well, that's that game. <laughs> they do have Ensnaring Bridge, so that's good information at least. But what does that do for us? I think we want to bring in Ratchet Bomb as a possible way to get rid of that. I think that might be all we do. Cathar Commando feels like it's going a little bit deep, but it might be necessary if they're going to have Ensnaring Bridge very consistently. But we do have ways to get around it otherwise, so I don't really know. Maybe we don't need that. Okay, I'm just going to run it back, and I'm not going to keep a hand that only has one land. <laughs> Reveal Yorion. Okay. We have two lands and a Springleaf Drum. Uh, we don't have much to do because we need more lands to be able to do anything with this hand. But we do have two lands. We have interaction with the Pirate Spell Bomb, so I guess that's nice. This hand's relatively low power level, but I'm kind of leaning towards keeping it. Yeah, let's try it out. We haven't had a good Sarah Paragon uh, game yet. And if we get to four mana relatively quickly, we should have a pretty stocked graveyard with this matchup. Inspiring Vantage, Springleaf Drum. Don't want to let them know about the Pirate Spell Bomb in case they have Hedron Crabs to play. They play Ruin Crab, and now I'm sad. We play Fiddlebender. 
and we play Pirate Spellbomb. Fiddlebender was a good top deck there. There's a decent chance they're just going to be able to remove it with a Fatal Push, but they can't drown the Locket quite yet. They play Ruin Crab. They play Flooded Strand. They're going to mill us a bunch. Let's see if they have a Fatal Push. They mill Sword of the Meek. That's good to know. Watery Grave down to 17. And looks like a Fatal Push. Yep. Okay. Very sad. We draw an Arid Mesa. Let's get a Steam Vent. Plates of Fairy. And I think I'll just go ahead and bounce one of their Ruin Crabs, even though it's relatively low impact. We draw Rogrin Triome. That's nice. We can play Sarah Paragon next turn, most likely, if we draw another land at least. Portable Hole, that's not bad. Let's Portable Hole a Crab. We have 50 cards in our deck, we're about to have 6 less. Pirate Spell Bomb is holding down the fort from the two toughness crabs, at least for the time being. Let's play Rogger and Triumph, tapped, and pass. Alright, we have 44 cards in our deck. Our opponent has four cards in hand and a ruined crab. We can go Sarah Paragon and hope that it resolves next... Well, it will resolve because we have the Teferi. We can go Sarah, Sarah Paragon. Do we have a portable hole in the graveyard? We do not. Maybe we will after they mill us a little bit more. I'd like to be able to remove this other crab. It doesn't look like it. Ashiok. Shit. Okay. That gets rid of our graveyard, so Sarah Paragon is not going to matter for that. And it also means that we can't... Do the infinite combo with Crackdown Construct anymore either. So that's unfortunate. Because Lightning Greaves is in exile. <laughs> okay. That was not fortunate. Let's draw a card with Pirate Spell Bomb, see what it gives us. Actually, do I want to shock Ashiok instead? Maybe I do want to shock Ashiok instead. Because that way, if I, if I draw a land, I can go Sarah Paragon, play Pirate Spellbomb, kill Ashiok. And that's at least something. Ragavan, that's not terrible. Play Sarah Paragon. We'll go ahead and play out the Pirate Spellbomb again, so they can't get rid of it with Ashiok. And we can threaten their Planeswalker for next turn. They have three cards in hand. We have 33 cards in our deck. Effectively four less, at least, because of this Ashiok. Crackdown Construct without the combo is very underwhelming, too, so that's kind of sad. But maybe it can get in or something. We'll see. Opponent mills us for three. Hitting Crucible of Worlds, Lion Sash, and Arid Mesa. They play Fractured Sanity, and I assume they're going to minus their Ashiok after that. We have very few cards in our deck, unfortunately. And our opponent's still at 15, so I don't think that this match is going to be going for us. Unfortunately. Yep. We have 12 cards left in the deck. We draw another Sarah Paragon. Plus a fairy. So I could play another Sarah Paragon or Crackdown Construct. And then activate Pirate Spell Bomb. Or I could dash Ragavan and activate Pirate Spell Bomb. 
Hmm. I feel like the dash plan is a little bit messy. I'd like to figure out how I can get Ruin Crab out of play, though. I think getting Ruin Crab out of play involves me dashing Ragavan here. Since they can't Fatal Push anyway. And I might draw their Fatal Push if they let it through. So let's do that. Let's go Sarah Paragon at Ashiok and Ragavan at face. Attack you. Attack Ashiok. We only have 11 cards, so they have a lot of cards that could kill us here. We kind of have to hope for a miracle. All right, they block with Ruin Crab. That at least lowers their possibilities. Hooray, I get to gain two life. <laughs> All right. There's a decent chance we're just dead here to them, like hard casting an archive trap. But we can hope for the best, I guess. What you got, opponent? They got three cards in hand. We have a measly 11 cards. They play Tasha's, and I assume that just kills us. Because we already had Caldra enter the exile zone. Yep. Uh, sad. GG's to our opponent. That was pretty fun. And I will see you in the next one. All right, round three with Fiddlebender. We won the die roll again. Getting pretty lucky with that so far. Let's see. We have some interaction and an Urza's Saga, so not that bad, but not really the kind of hand that you generally want on the play. Overall, I think it's good enough that we keep it, though. We have all, we have all of our colors. We have a decent amount of lands. We have interaction for different kinds of things and maybe a little bit of ramp. Let's see. I'm going to go to Sacred Foundry, Springleaf Drum, in case we draw a creature that we could possibly get some mana off of for turn two or three. And let's see what our opponent's doing. They play Windswept Heath, Fetching. They're not playing a Companion, so it's not the usual Windsweep, Windswept Heath deck. Yorion, of course. They play Noble Hierarch. Interesting. Windswept Heath into Temple Garden Noble Hierarch, I feel like, is not a thing that you see that often these days. I'm guessing that's a Collected Company deck, probably probably the Bant Soul Herder deck that Aspiring Spike's been doing. Could also be the Counters Company deck, or something similar. Let's use Stoneforge Mystic to get Cauldra. Go ahead and get the clock established relatively quickly and play Portable Hole on Noble Hierarch. To get rid of that. Okay. So next turn we're either going to be making a construct with Urza Saga or a Cauldra complete. Probably the Cauldra since it's just faster in general. Kind of plays Hollowed Fountain. I might actually just wait and do the construct in case they are playing, like, Solitude's another interaction. Yeah, they're playing Solitude. Okay, well, I'm definitely waiting and doing the Construct now, since they got rid of the Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> That's fun. Definitely looks like this is the Soul Herder deck. I don't want to give my opponent the information that I have blue yet, so I'm just going to play Planes and pass. They could have Sorcery Speed Removal, so I'm not going to go... Construct into Soul Guide Lantern or Construct into Pirate Spell Bomb here. Opponent plays a tapped Hollow Fountain. We make a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. We draw a Halo Fountain, which is relatively useless right now. Make another construct. There are four fours. Tutor with Saga. Getting what? Hope of Gearper doesn't really make sense. Pithing Needle. We could try to like blind name a fetch land that they have, possibly. Other than that, I don't think that Bant Soul Herder really has activated abilities. Shadow Spear seems kind of mid. 
Hope of Gear Pro, I guess, gives us another way to activate Springleaf Drum, but I don't think that matters all that much. I think I would rather have Aether Spellbomb here. Or the Pithing Needle trying to name a fetch land is also a little bit fun. Because they probably have Misty Rainforest as a 4 of. Fuck it, let's do that. <laughs> Because I think they're planning to go fourth land collected company, and if we blind name the only land that they have, that would be really funny. Play Hollowed Fountain, play Pirate Spellbomb. Attack for six. Opponent. Plays Ice Fang Quattle. Uh. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Because we can. And it draws a card up to four cards in hand and takes five down to 12. All right, what you got, an opponent? Wall of Omens, that's a blocker. Noble Hierarch, that's probably not a blocker. And Glass Pole Shore, three cards left in their hand. Okay. We draw Arid Mesa. What do I want to do here? We can play Soul Guide Lantern. Go ahead and get rid of Solitude. Crack Arid Mesa getting Steam Vents. Play Halo Fountain. I could have also put Yorion into hand, but I think that this is a bit better right now since it develops my board, and the Yorion doesn't do much other than swapping out Portable Hole, possibly, for the Wall of Omens. But I think Wall of Omens is just going to die here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Attack, attack. I'd rather present Lethal than use Halo Fountain here anyway. They block with Noble Hierarch, that's interesting. Alright, so they take 7 down to 5. They leave the Wall of Omens, which makes me think that they have a Soul Herder and they're planning on blinking the Wall of Omens to try to, to uh, draw into another Solitude or some other removal. They go Collected Company? Yep. Alright, Whiff. <laughs> whiff! Endurance Noble Hierarch. I mean, that's pretty close to a Whiff, honestly, compared to getting... Like Deputy of Detention and a Soul Herder, which would have been back backbreaking there. Pretty much as close to a whip as they were going to get. They have three cards in hand. They didn't have a Solitude last turn. Maybe they do now. Let's go attacking. Kind of blocks with Endurance, blocks with Wall of Omens. Interesting. So they decided to keep the Noble Hierarch that time. Let's put Yorion into hand. And play out our land. Leaving up Soul Guide Lantern in case they get... One of their many... Uh, Eternal Witnesses. They do have Deputy of Detention, that's a little annoying. Okay. And a wall of blossoms. Okay. So I think I'm going to draw a card with the Soul Guide Lantern here to increase my odds of hitting a land for Cauldra. Let's get Rogan Triumph tapped. Draw a card with Soul Guide Lantern. Shadow Spear. Okay. And we draw Pirate Spellbomb. Interesting. No lands yet. So I can play Yorion. 
I can activate Halo Fountain with the Orion, but it doesn't really do much other than that, unfortunately. I could swap out Portable Hole for the Wall of Blossoms, which could probably be correct, since they have plenty of mana anyway. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I could also just play out Pirate Spellbomb Shadow Spear. Playing out Pirate Spellbomb and keeping it up stops them from playing Soul Herder unless they have a way to uh, keep it around. So I think that's what I want to do here. And we'll just pass after that. Unfortunately, Yorion does not have many things to blink right now that are actually good. I don't place Flooded Strand. Place Soul Herder. I assume they have Ephemerate. They do not. We take two from the Deputy. Okay. Opponent has two cards in hand. Do they play something second main? They do not. Do we draw land? We do not. It's a little lame. Let's play Crackdown Construct. I didn't do that right. Actually, it doesn't matter because I have to untap with Halo Fountain, so I tap for a white with Springleaf Drum. So that's fine. I don't know why I didn't leave Raga and Triumph untapped. It's just a little bit incorrect. Does it say sorcery speed? No. All right. We will pass. What you got, opponent? Ice Fang, Coatl. They're going to have three cards in hand after they draw for turn. Okay. If we, if we randomly draw Lightning Greaves, we can kill them with Crackdown Construct because we can give it Trample with Shadow Spear if they don't have removal. What's our opponent got? They tap 5. Time Warp, that's a little annoying, but okay. It's essentially just an Explore here since they don't have a Soul Herder to get extra triggers with. They attack for 2, okay. Hopefully we don't get infinite turns here, but we will see. Alright, what you got, opponent? Hopefully nothing. <laughs> Soul Herder, okay. That is definitely good for them. I assume they're going to use Soul Herder on Deputy of Detention to get rid of Crackdown Construct. They might use it on Coatl to essentially give it Vigilance and also draw a card. Let's see. Use it on Deputy. Makes sense. I'd love to draw a removal spell for this Soul Herder. They get a counter on their Soul Herder, we will make a boy. Okie dokie. Yep. Soul Herder has a counter on it. They have two cards in hand. What is our best draw here? Removal is certainly good for Soul Herder. Esper Sentinel is not really what we wanted there. Hmm. We still can't play the Cauldra. We could play Yorion, but again, it doesn't do that much right now. So we could just go Esper Sentinel, draw a card with Halo Fountain, maybe.
probably have to wait until our opponent's turn to do that, though. Since they could just attack us for a bunch. Yeah. Let's put Shadow Spear on Esper Sentinel. And make a and we're gonna make a token instead since we need to be blocking. I can worry about drawing a card next turn. Halo Fountain's a really interesting card. It's very good with Fiddlebender, but it's kind of awkward other than that. Alright, opponent attacks for four. We will block with a citizen. Okay. Kind of blinks Wall of Blossoms to draw a card. Grows the Soul Herder. Eventually we are just going to lose if we keep letting them draw extra cards. There's a decent chance they have removal by now too. Or if we do get Cauldra into play. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see at that point. But it has three cards in hand. They've used one Solitude already. We draw Portable Hole. That's not bad. Not bad. We could use Yorion to reset this Portable Hole and put them both on their draw effects. Hmm. Do I attack with Esper Sentinel here? I think I do. Because I want to either start gaining a bit of life or just see what they have. They don't have Death Touch on Ice Fang Waddle right now. So they'd have to block like this. And then at least they lose the Kowaddle. I don't think Esper Sentinel is going to draw us any cards. Alright, they just let us gain life. That's fine. Make mana. Let's untap both of these to draw a card. See what we get. Esper Sentinel. Okay. Play Esper Sentinel. We are still somehow dodging drawing another land. Play Portable Hole. On Wall of Omens. Okay. Grow Soul Herder. And pass. Hmm. Looks like a Solitude. Yep. Solitudes are larger Esper Sentinel away. We gain two life up to 11. Soul Herder grows. And I think the game's just gone long enough that we're dead here. Unfortunately, since we don't really have an engine and our opponent does. This does seem like a really interesting matchup, though, because both of our decks are trying to do relatively similar things in different ways, where we're trying to use tutoring and artifact synergies to grind out the game, and our opponent is using ETB synergies. All right, let's chump block the Soul Herder again. I'm just going to blink Solitude, I assume. We'll see what we draw, but I think I'm just going to concede after this one to conserve... Uh... to conserve on time. Soul Herder grows again. Yep, yep. 
We draw Dark Seal Citadel. We could finally play Cauldra, but it doesn't really do much. Although I guess I might as I can't play Cauldra because I don't have creature in play. God damn it. Alright, I'm gonna concede. <laughs> uh alright. Well, let's bring in what? So fairy definitely seems good. Because stopping there ephemerates and other shenanigans is nice. Mystic Dispute seems good. Spell Pierce, maybe. It basically only hits either of opposing to fairies if they bring them in or ephemerates and collected companies, but those are very high value targets. Ratchet Bomb, maybe. Cathar Commando, no. Burnt and Forge Tender, no. Void Mirror, no. Unlicensed Hearse, probably not. Damping Sphere, no. Okay. What's not good? Hope of Gearper is not good. Esper Sentinel is mid. It's probably not good. Because it's not going to be drawing us cards most of the time. Hmm. I like Crucible of Worlds. I think I cut down on some amount of Esper Sentinels. Maybe I cut all the Esper Sentinels because they don't have that many creatures at all. Or non-creature spells at all, rather. Yeah, I think I actually do that. Let's just run it like that and see what happens. They have a very easy time playing, paying for uh, Esper Sentinel, and as we saw, it's kind of just a 1-1 one -one for 1 in this matchup. So I don't like that very much. This hand has turn 1 Ragavan and a decent amount of interaction, so we will keep. Hopefully we get to actually get in with Ragavan, but we will see. We're going to go to Scalding Tarn, Fetch... Getting Sacred Foundry, shocking it in, and playing the monkey. And pass. Alright, hopefully we can dodge removal for at least one turn here. They would need to have Solitude, I think. Punt plays a Forest, plays Noble Hierarch. Okay. We draw Sword of the Meek. Hmm. Do I Portable Hole the Noble Hierarch? I think I'm going to attack first, because I don't think that they block in any reasonable scenario, so they might Solitude first. And I don't want to give them the information that I'm going to Portable Hole their Dork in that scenario. Alright, they do Solitude, they get rid of Knight of Autumn. Goodbye, monkey. Very sad. We're going to play Scalding Tarn and Portable Hole. There, boy. Okay. Fun is probably just going to play a wall here. Maybe another Mana Dork. Yep, they play a wall. We're going to want to hold up this Mystic Dispute for Soul Herder, most likely. Let's fetch, get the Triome. Hopefully we draw land. We do draw land, Urza's Saga. Okay. And I think I want to develop the board, so I'm going to play Lion Sash. They could Knight of Autumn away our Urza Saga with this uh, with this play, but we can still Mystic Dispute a Soul Herder if they go for that, and I think that's a bit more likely. They play an Island. Glass Pool Mimic. Do I counter the Glass Pool Mimic? I don't think I do. It lets them draw a card because it's a wall of blossoms, but... 
tempo wise that would have been a decent play but we get to grow lion sash this way and still hold up mystic dispute if we draw land that would be fantastic because then we can still have mystic dispute for soul herder and also make a construct okay we did draw land fantastic And I'm just going to pass rather than attacking in with the Lion Sash here, I think. Let's see what our opponent does. Snow-covered forest. Okay. I think they have collected company up. I think we still have to risk it and make a construct here. Yep. There's the company. What are they going to get? Please whiff. Soul Herder Wall of Blossoms. They got the Soul Herder in their end step, so that's kind of nice for us, actually. Let's go ahead and eat their collected company so they can't get it with Eternal Witness. We draw Scalding Tarn. What do I want to do here? I can go make a construct, get Aether Spellbomb, bounce Soul Herder with Aether Spellbomb, play Scalding Tarn, counter Soul Herder with Mystic Dispute. I think that's the way that I get the most out of these cards. Get Aether Spellbomb, play Scalding Tarn. Go to combat. Back attack. We eat a wall of blossoms. Okay. They take two, which is interesting. I guess because they didn't want us to eat a couple lands and kill another wall. Uh, let's pass. Opponent plays Deputy of Detention. Alright, so that we have to Mystic Dispute, unfortunately. Opponent plays Misty Rainforest. We're going to fetch with Scalding Tarn, getting Steam Vents. Shocked in. I'm going to put a stop in their second main. You can attack with your Soul Herder if you want to. I'm going to bounce it before you get a draw. Okay. Our opponent's at 18. They have a Soul Herder and three unknowns in their hand. We draw Urza's Saga. Let's play Saga. Okay. Let's play to fairy so they can't ephemerate to get free blocks. Let's go to combat. Attack with everybody. Eat deputy. Eat Wall of Omens. And I think I'm just going to plus Teferi here because I don't want to give them an extra draw with these Wall of Omens, if I can help it. I'd rather wait for the Teferi minus on the turn that I think they're going to die. Alright, opponents at 6. Let's see what they have. They go down to 5 with Misty. Get a tapped Hollowed Fountain. Surely we should have this game, right? Surely. They play Soul Herder. Do they have a land for turn? They play Tapped Land. Okay, so they're not going Soul Herder into another Deputy. That's the main thing that I was concerned about happening. They get to draw a card, or possibly make another Soul Herder. They decide to draw a card. They get a counter on Soul Herder. 
And let's see if we can make it to where they have to at least have their soul herder die here. Because they can't cast anything. So we can go Flooded Strand. Bounce you. Play Shadow Spear. Now they should just be dead. Because all these can hit them for five. Attack with the team. Please die. You can't cast anything, bro. I have a Teferi in play. All right. <laughs> they had a nice Vanquadal. Cool. All right. Uh, I think I'm just going to run it back. I think Esper Sentinel coming out is definitely the right choice here. I still think there's an argument for Spell Pierce, but I think it's a little bit too narrow. We reveal Yorion. Huh. This hand's really top-end heavy, so I think it's kind of shit. Like, we play Stoneforge, and then we just kind of don't do anything for a long time unless we're drawing lands, so I think we got a mulligan this. Hmm. I'd really rather have some removal, but I think we keep... And let's get rid of one of these Teferis since we already have one. This hand definitely seems sketchy to me. Bona plays Noble Hierarch. Do we have removal or interaction in any way? We do not. That's not good. Let's play Flooded Strand, get Hollowed Fountain with it. Go to 17, play Springleaf Drum. See what our opponent plays. They kept 7, so that's not very good for us. Place Hollowed Fountain down to 15. What you got? Just a wall? Maybe a Night of Autumn, perhaps? Or nothing. Okay. So it plays nothing. We draw Sword of the Meek. I feel like they have Artifact slash Enchantment removal, so I don't really want to go straight for Urza's Saga here. I think I'd rather go Inspiring Vantage Lion Sash. To keep them off of Ewit into picking up Coco. What you got, opponent? Ice Fang Quaddle, maybe? Yep. Opponent draws a card. Plays Ephemerate, it looks like. Ah, all right. Maybe once we get to Fairy Down, we can get a couple of Femorates stranded in their hand. But we will see. Pennant plays Windswept Heath. Fetches. Gets a Forest and... They're going for a company. Looks like it. They play the company. Okay. Please whiff, as always. Just hoping that you whiff. It's very unlikely, but it definitely happens. That was not a whiff at all. Oh my god. <laughs> that was possibly the uh, most powerful collected company that they could have had there. Other than maybe Knight of Autumn instead of Deputy of Detention. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. That is not good. Oh no. Soul Herder's out of damage range for us now, and we can't Portable Hole it away either. We draw Portable Hole. 
we what do we have what are what are our options this player is a saga okay we can go sort of the meek portable hole and try to have larger constructs or we can go to fairy and then down ticket to draw a card and then it just dies so i think sort of the meek portable hole is what we have to do we can cut off their draw or cut off one of their mana. I think cutting off their draw is a little bit better. So let's do that. Soul Herder gets to grow because of Portable Hole. It's hilarious that that card triggers off of uh, your opponent exiling things too. It feels like it wouldn't be doing that, but Modern Horizons cards are just kind of like that, I guess. They're very interesting at least. And I think we're dead, most likely, since they have a full grip and really strong board control right now. But maybe they have six lands in their hand or something. I guess we'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to rely on that, though. All right, they play Wall of Blossoms, so they still have another draw engine. Hmm. Deputy of Detention means that Urza's Saga Constructs are not safe. Opponent hits us for 5. We go down to 12. Opponent. Blinks their Wall of Blossoms. Okay. Draws a card back up to 7 cards. Grows their Soul Herder. We draw. Sarah Paragon. I think I'd rather make a Construct this turn. Sarah Paragon could help us later. Hmm. I don't think this one's going to go our way. I feel like... Like, of course, maybe it doesn't work so well with our effects that put things from our Graveyard or Library into play, but I think we kind of need to have a... Graph Digger's Cage or something similar, at least in the sideboard. For interaction against Collected Company and also for interaction against, like, uh, the Yawgmoth deck. Because I've had a bit of trouble against Yawgmoth with this deck as well. Since we're not exactly loaded up with removal. And we don't play Wraths. Hmm. Alright, opponent hits us for five. It turns into six with Noble Hierarch. We take it. They have seven cards in hand. They're going to have eight cards in hand and discard back down to seven, most likely. Unless they play some more things that don't draw them cards during their main phase. Which is also a possibility. What you got, opponent? Another Soul Herder. They do not have to discard down to hand size unless they draw extra cards with this Soul Herder. And Wall of Omens. Soul Herder decks are just really cool in general, I want to say. Uh, I haven't done a video with one because it seems like it's pretty saturated so far with uh, Spike doing a lot of them. But either way, I think they're a very interesting deck type. It's cool to see like interesting interactive decks in any sort of capacity in Modern. It's a bunch of Soul Herder triggers. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Draws a card. Blinks the wall. Gets a bunch of triggers. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep. Eight cards in our opponent's hand. We make a construct. Let's see if it just gets removed immediately instead of them discarding to hand size, that'd be kind of funny. Alright, it looks like that is not the case. We at least got to keep the construct. But, unfortunately, I don't think that we have a way to win this game. We can make another construct. They can bounce their deputy, or flicker their, de their uh, deputy of detention to get rid of both the constructs, so they're not particularly effective. We can get Aether Spellbomb, 
and get rid of a soul herder for like a second. We could to fairy bounce a soul herder maybe. We can play Sarah, uh, Sarah Paragon, get back a land. The grip of seven, I think, makes it to where we just can't do all that much here. I think I'd rather play Sarah Paragon, since it's a bit better than the Construct. We could Pithing Needle their land. I think Aether Spell Bomb might be better, though. Since it can interact with their Soul Herder is a little bit better. So let's get that. Let's maybe I play Teferi to draw a card here. Blue, white, colorless. And see what I get off the card draw. Because I could hit like a Galvanic Blast and actually get rid of a Soul Herder. But it has a Solitude, of course. Let's make a blue with the construct. I gotta say, I don't have a lot of faith. Yup, yup. We gained some life. That's something, I guess. <laughs> Opponent. Ephemerates their solitude. Ah, oh, holy shit. So the solitude sticks around. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My god, that's a lot of triggers. Soul Herders grow. Yup, yup. Well, luckily, because of the Solitude Ephemerate, even if I had made a second Construct here, it wouldn't have mattered all that much. I guess that's a Silver Lining. Let's bounce Soul Herder, the larger one. Draw a card, see what we get. We get a Sacred Foundry, and I'll just scoop. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> that was a really interesting matchup. I'll see you in the next one. All right, round four with Fiddlebender. We won the die roll, so we will take the play. Let's reveal our Yorion. We have kind of a shit hand, so let's mulligan. Our opponent's not playing a companion. All right, we have Esper Sentinel, Portable Hole, Fiddlebender, Three Lands, and Soul Guide Lantern. It looks like the Lantern's going on the bottom for us. So let's keep this one, get rid of you. We can get a basic planes with this Arid Mesa to conserve our life total a little bit since we have the Steam Vent and the Rogrin Triome already. So let's get a planes. Play out Esper Sentinel and see what our opponent's doing. Depending on what our opponent does on their turn one, we could either play Fiddlebender on turn two or just play the tapped Triome and Portable Hole. Opponent playing Steam Vents, tapped, okay. Very inconclusive, could easily be either a Murktide deck or a Living End type of deck, but neither of them usually play a tap land on turn one. Hmm. We drew Goblin Engineer. I think I want to go ahead and just get Fiddlebender into play and see if they have an answer for it or not. Hopefully put the uh, pressure on their mana earlier in the game. 
This could also be a Crashing Footfalls deck. That would make sense why they play turn one tap steam vents. Since Footfalls doesn't very consistently have a turn one play other than suspending Footfalls. And maybe occasionally casting dead on something. Let's see. Besage you. Still looks like it could be either of those decks. Hmm. Alright, what do we have that we could get with Fiddlebender on two? Thopter Foundry is probably the go-to. Lightning Graves would also be fine. But since we have Goblin Engineer, that means that we can get Sword of the Meek in the graveyard pretty quickly. Hmm. And Sword of the Meek in the graveyard also means that if we get Sword of the Meek back, we can start getting Esper Sentinel back for free with Goblin Engineer, assuming that that survives. Interesting. So I could go Scalding Tarn, get an untapped land, play Goblin Engineer, play, or get rid of Esper Sentinel with Fiddlebender. That doesn't seem that bad, actually. It gets rid of our Esper Sentinel for the time being. But getting a quick Thopter Sword into play seems very strong. I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so let's crack Scalding Tarn. Get Sacred Foundry. Whoops. Play Goblin Engineer. Okay. Yes. Sword of the Meek in the Graveyard. Fiddlebender. Sorry to do this to you, Esper Sentinel. But I think it's worth it, at least for the time being. Thopter Foundry. Alright, so now we definitely have Thopter Sword in play, unless they have another Besage you. We're playing against Living End. Okay, so this is actually a good matchup to have Thopter Sword for as well. It's interesting that they kept a hand that didn't have any turn 1 cycles as Living End. Oh my god, that's a lot of street rates. Never mind. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. So I'm curious, are they going to go for the Living End during their turn or not. Because if they do, we get back Esper Sentinel and Sword of the Meek. Oh, we don't get everything back because of Waker of Waves. Oh no. Waker of Waves makes the 1-1s one -one into zero ones, so we don't get Sword of the Meek triggers. Hmm. That's not very good. But our opponent passed, so... I guess it doesn't matter after all, because now we can just get Graveyard Hate. Okay. Do I dash Ragavan this turn? What's the best way to sequence this? <laughs> what is the best way to sequence this? Let's play out Portable Hole, because it's not going to do anything. Force of Negation. That's a little weird. Hmm. So we don't have any artifacts to sack to Thopter Foundry. Or to Oswald that is not a Thopter Foundry. 
I could sack Thopter Foundry to get a three. Maybe that's the line. What are our options for the threes? Nettle Cyst doesn't do much. Crucible doesn't do much. Bray's Apprentice doesn't do much. Halo Fountain, eh. I'd rather have a way to get Graveyard Hate. I think what I have to do... Okay, this is... Okay, bear with me for this. We're going to sacrifice Thopter Foundry to itself. We're going to get back Sword of the Meek. Okay. Yes. We're going to use Fiddlebender, sacking the Thopter token. All right, I found the line. I knew that there was a way to do it. Get Soul Guide Lantern. Waker of Waves is gone. Okay, I found the line. <laughs> I'm sure if you were a Fiddlebender player, you were scratching your eyes out and trying to get me to do the right thing there, but I figured it out. And I can get Thopter Foundry back into play by using Goblin Engineer. So that's nice. They cycle Curator of Mysteries. Of course, that doesn't work as well if they go for a Living End here, but I get back my Esper Sentinel in that scenario, and they won't get back anything because of this Soul Guide Lantern. Unless they maybe get one uh, Street Wraith if they draw the fourth one. An opponent concedes. Sweet. All right. Well, thank God that worked. Let's bring in Void Mirror, Unlicensers. Spell Pierce, all the Teferis, maybe probably Mystical Dispute too. Let's see what we're taking out first. I think we need to be very defensive in this matchup. So I don't think Crackdown Construct is the right direction to go in. And I don't really think Lightning Greaves is either, since they're not going to have that much spot removal, if any. Uh, Pithing Needle's mid. Pirate Spell Bomb's pretty bad, so we can cut that. Portable Hole does nothing, so we can cut all of them. And I think I do want the Mystical Dispute, and I'm going to take out... What do I want to take out? Hmm. Oh, may I bring in Damping Sphere, too, actually. Just to have as much interaction as possible. And we can cut Crucible of Worlds, and I like having the option for the Ember Cleaves and Cauldras and stuff, so I think I'm going to keep all of them. I think, and I'm just going to cut Crucible and Nettle Cyst, since Nettle Cyst is a little on the wonky side. All right, reveal Yorion. We have. We have Teferi and Unlicensed Hearse. So that's enough hate that we can get through one grief and possibly resolve something. And we have a Ragavan to where we can get Teferi or Saragon, uh, Sarah Paragon Saragon, uh, into play more quickly. So let's keep. Turn 1 Monkey is generally pretty good regardless of what else is in the hand. But other than that, this hand seems pretty decent against our matchup here. Plus, if we get the Sarah Paragons into play, we can get these other hate cards. Opponent does not have a hate card on turn one. They just play Botanical Sanctum Go. Let's get Steam Vents. Shock it in. Cast the Monkey. See if they have a Subtlety or something, maybe. They Cycle Striped Riverwinder. Okay. So do I play Unlicensed Hearse or Teferi? They play a tapped land again. Our opponent's keeping sort of weird hands, I think, for Living End. All right. Attack with Ragavan. I think it's more likely that they have an an answer for Teferi, but it's also a bit more powerful. Unlicensed Hearse is more powerful if we get it in, into play early, though. So maybe that's what we go for. 
Hmm. Yeah, let's just go for Teferi. I think it's the safest. All right, no counterspell, please. No, no counter spell, please. Please, no counter. They could have force for this. Or they could have a mystic dispute. It looks like they do. They have a architects of will. So maybe they don't have the force yet. Please. Hooray! All right, I'm just going to plus to Fairy in case they play something out. And we will pass. Opponent plays a forest and passes. Excellent. Let's get in with the monkey. See what we get from our opponent. Waker of Waves, we will not be casting that. Let's... Mm. Play on Licensed Hearse. Exile both of these. Hooray! Opponent concedes. Alright, so... I'm at least going 2-3. Thank God. I'll see you in the next one. All right, final round with Fiddlebender. We lost the die roll. Let's reveal Yorion. We have two portable holes and a Galve Blast and Esper Sentinel as our cards in hand. Two fetch lands and Urza's Saga. Our opponent's keeping seven. I think we'll keep seven as well. This seems like a pretty good going second hand. Let's see what our opponent is up to. Opponent plays Scalding Tarn. They're not playing a companion, so that's nice to see at least. Let's go... Flooded Strand... Getting... Hmm... Let's get a basic planes, play Esper Sentinel. What you got, opponent? Looks like they might have something to cast in response to the Esper Sentinel here. They do not. They get Ketria Triumph. Okay. Are we playing against Footfalls this time? Perhaps. Hopefully not. I don't really want to play against Footfalls, but... I guess portable holes are decent against that, at least. Not fantastic, but decent. Opponent plays Arid Mesa. It no longer looks like that to me. We draw Lightning Greaves. Okay. Let's go to combat. Attack for one. Should I play out Urza's Saga? And essentially be dedicating my turn three to making a construct. Or should I wait and hold up removal? I think I want to play Urza Saga here and start applying pressure to my opponent. Especially since Lightning Greaves means that I can give the construct the constructs haste if I make them during my main phase. If this resolves, that is. I guess we'll see if it resolves or not. Maybe this is a removal spell for the Esper Sentinel about to come down. Gets a mountain. Bolt. Okay, so it is not... I repeat, it is not a Footfalls deck, because they have regular Lightning Bolt. Maybe this is a Creativity deck? That would make sense? Yeah, it's a Creativity deck. Okay. So we have... Lots of interaction for that, so that's good news for us, at least. Or 
There's a Saga ticks up, opponent. Cracks footfalls. Gets a steam vents. Okay. Looks like they're gonna play ice. Yeah, they do. All right, well, that makes me feel less bad about using my mana for other stuff this turn. So we can portable hole away their clue token. And play Sacred Foundry, yes. Uh, I think I want to go ahead and just portable hole away their crab as well. Since the Galf Blast wouldn't have killed it anyway. Now, they might be able to get one guy here. But we can hope that they can't. Okay, they can. We discard a fetch land, take three. Sarah Paragon, that's a pretty good draw. Let's make a construct getting Aether Spellbomb. Play Arid Mesa, haste up the construct, fetch with Arid Mesa, get... We already have two white, so let's get Steam Vents, yes. Uh... Do I want to bounce and then go to combat, or do I want to go to combat and possibly use Galf Blast, sacrificing the Construct? I think I'd rather bounce. Attack for four. Hopefully they don't get to make another Archon here. If we get to untap, I think we're in a good spot. If they make a second Archon, we're in pretty dire straits, though. They have Jace. They can't bounce our Construct. Haha. -ha. And they can't make a construct since they tap down for Jace too. I didn't know that creativity plays Jace. Maybe it's just a one-off. It's kind of cool to see though. I should play a Jace deck on the channel. I don't think I've played any like traditional control decks or anything like that, have a Scalding Tarn. They could possibly get a dwarf with that. We draw another Sarah Paragon. That's a bit much. We don't really need that. We need more lands in order to actually play them. And it fetches. Okay. Let's attack Jace. They block with the dwarf. Okay. I think I just go ahead and bolt Jace here. So they don't get another activation on it. Let's see if they have another creativity already. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, okay. What did Foothills? So they could creativity X2, possibly. We still don't have a land, but we have a crackdown construct now. That's good news. Let's attack for four. Opponent takes it. All right. So we got to dodge creativity for one more turn. I think they would have gone for it last turn if they had it already. Since they could have gotten another Dwarven Mine, presumably. Unless they are just playing two or something. What do we have to side in against creativity? Safari seems good. I'm not really sure what else. Spell Pierce and Mystic Dispute probably come in. Alright, they could Creativity X3 if they have it. And then we're just actually dead. They do not have it. But we don't have a land either. Which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, Goblin Engineer is a good draw, though. Let's go to combat. Attack for four. Goblin Engineer means we can play Goblin Engineer, put probably Portable Hole into our graveyard. Then haste up Goblin Engineer with Lightning Greaves. And if they don't have removal, we can get Portable Hole back. They didn't have creativity last turn, so we could just try to dodge that again and go for something like Crucible of Worlds. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, let's get portable hole. Greaves on engineer. See if they have removal for it. There's a decent chance they do. They haven't been bolting anything lately. They have removal, that's fine. Alright. So they did have the bolt. That does make it slightly less likely that they have another bolt for Crackdown Construct in a second, if we draw a land. Please do not have an Archon. <laughs> or a Counterspell or Removal. All we want is our opponent to not have a way to cheat their stuff into play or a Counterspell or Removal. So basically nothing at all. Can we dodge our opponent having literally anything at all? Fourth Dwarven Mine comes out. Okay. And it looks like we're dead based on the amount of mana getting tapped here. Oh, they just have one Archon. That's still not good for us. Because that gets rid of our Construct. And we have to discard Sarah Paragon. Alright. Hmm. I think we're dead. Thopter Foundry. Yeah, we're dead. Maybe if we had gotten uh, Sword of the Meek instead with... Goblin Engineer, we could do something with this Thopter Foundry, but we can actually only make one one uh, token anyway, so let's just scoop it up. That was a really fun game, though. And our opponent seems to like the deck that we're playing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Spell Pierce, yes. Mystic Dispute, yes. Seeing Jace definitely brings Mystic Dispute into play. Ratchet Bomb, yes. Uh, and let's bring in all the Teferis. Where do we go from here? I think Batter Skull is a pretty easy out since they're not really playing an aggressive deck. Shadow Spear probably also comes out since we have other ways to get Trample. And Trample is the most effective part of uh, Shadow Spear in really tokens heavy decks as well. Lion Sash seems mid. They're probably playing Ren and Six though. Like we might just want Soul Guide Lantern instead. Uh, let's cut Nettle Cysts, cut Lion Sash. I think I want all the removal to stay in. My Cope of Gear per pretty good. Pithing Needle is good against this type of deck. Pirate Spell Bomb and Aether Spell Bomb are pretty good. Let's cut Rabbit Battery, because I'm concerned about it being a 1-1 one -one and getting sniped by Ren and Six really easily. We have two more cards to cut. I'm considering Brea's Apprentice. I think that would be a decent one to get rid of. And then maybe we just cut the Ember Cleave and concede that we're probably not winning that way. I think that's fine. Let's run it like that. That way we get to leave in the Crackdown Construct combo since our opponent apparently is not aware of that since they uh, did not know quite why we were playing uh, Lightning Greaves in our deck, but yeah. We will see what happens. Let's reveal our Yorion. All right, we have Portable Hole, Spell Pierce, Crucible of Worlds, Scalding Tarn, Oswald Fiddlebender, Ratchet Bomb. We have a lot of cards that we want. We'd like to have one more land, and we would rather this Darksteel Citadel not be a Darksteel Citadel, but I think I keep anyway because this Crucible of Worlds gives us our land drops if we draw just one more land, and we have a decent amount of interaction. So let's keep. This is probably going to get a... Hollowed Fountain, it looks like, by the composition of this hand, uh, hand color-wise. 
I would desperately like to draw land on or before turn three for this Crucible. Honestly, I'd rather be playing Crucible on turn four, so I definitely get at least one land off of it, but we'll see. Let's just go Scalding Tarn, pass. Trying to place hard evidence. Uh, do I want to just spell pierce this? Probably not. I can just ratchet bomb the stuff away. Yeah, I'll just plan on ratchet bombing. Let's get hollowed. Ah, oh, shit. I should have got Rogren Triumph. I'm a dumbass. Oh my god, I'm a dumbass. All right. I'm just making most misplays here. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, we drew a land. Better to be lucky than good. Play Ratchet Bomb. When's the last time you saw one of those in Modern? Pass the turn. I love playing Ratchet Bomb. I used to play this in uh, my KCI deck. It's very fun. I think it was just sideboard, but I think I had like one Ratchet Bomb main deck when I was playing locally because a lot of people were playing Eldrazi Tron at the time, at least in my local meta. Kind of plays Bloodstain Mire, fetches. Oh, okay. What you got, opponent? I could have cracked uh, Ratchet Bomb during my turn to get rid of both of these so they don't get a draw from the clue. But I think it's better in general to hold the Ratchet Bomb so that they have to either pressure you into using it by using a artifact removal spell or pressure you into using it by attempting to turn one of their tokens into an Archon. Because just sitting in play currently, it can effectively just continue being a deterrent until they draw a combination of cards to deal with it. Since we drew, since we have Spell Pierce to go with the Fiddlebender, I think I want to go ahead and put Fiddlebender into play. And this way I have a line for next turn where I could possibly go Crucible of Worlds, turn it into a Construct eventually, and use the Portable Hole to make... Okay, opponent cracks the clue. And we can use the Portable Hole to... Yeah, we can use Portable Hole to get Greaves, and we can use Crucible to get the Construct if they're tapped down. Bolt? No. I would rather keep my Artifact Birthing Pot around, if you don't mind. I'm going to birth some Artifacts right in your face. I'm sorry, that sounded lewd. Alright, but... I think I'm going to go Portable Hole on their Crab, use Fiddlebender to get Greaves, put it on Fiddlebender to protect it, and have that be the plan here. Since I drew a fourth land, I don't need to play Crucible out immediately, and I can actually go for Crucible the following turn if they're tapped out, and then try to kill them. So I think that's the way to do this. They're pretty likely to have removal if I do that, but they might tap out during their turn for a draw spell or a Jace or something, and that would be fine by me. I'm going to take this main phase stop off since our opponent is not playing a Soul Herder deck anymore. Play Portable Hole. Okay. Uh, our life total doesn't matter that much, so I'm going to hold up the white, the uh, blue again, as if I have a spell pierce, just in case it matters. Sack portable hole. Okay. Get lightning greaves. Greaves on our guy. Okay. Pass. What you got, opponent? What you got, what you got? Please have something that you want to tap out for. That would be very cool. Looks like Renin 6. Renin 6 picking up a land, probably holding up mana again, unfortunately.
What could they tap out for, for two mana? I wonder. Hard evidence. Maybe they have another hard evidence. That would be pretty cool of them. Doesn't look like it though. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Hmm. Ha ha ha. We could portable hole away a guy. We can port we could actually hmm. Let's play Crucible of Worlds. I think I know what I want to do this turn. Play Crucible. Let's use Fiddlebender. Sacrificing Darksteel Citadel. So our opponent has given us a choice. I'm going to needle their Bloodstained Mire since they let us do that. And now we can portable haul away their Ren and Six. So let's get Sacred Foundry, Owl, Portable Hole, gets Ren and Six. Cool. <laughs> that was an interesting one. Please tap out, please tap out, please tap out. Play another run in six, please. <laughs> I want I want the infinite damage combo. <laughs> Do it. It looks like that might be what happens. Oh my god. <laughs> Has our opponent already played land this turn? I think so. Yeah, they played Blood Crypt. Alright, we're got we're we can get rid of their blocker. So that means we won. I'm pretty sure at least. Uh Let's destroy everything. CMC zero. Fiddlebender. Pay a white. Get rid of Crucible. Crackdown Construct. Uh, let's just run it back. I don't think there's anything that we really need to change based on what we saw. I like that our opponent likes our deck. It's very fun talking to them. What's another line that we could think about trying to do? I think that's pretty much what we want to do for the most part against them. I want to know what you guys think about this, but especially if you're playing, if you are a uh, Urza Saga player. For me, almost regardless of who it is that I'm playing against, I think specifically the 
three or four color creativity players are the ones that let me pithing needle their fetch lands most often. If that's true for you, I want to hear about it. All right, this only has late game, so I think we got a mulligan this, unfortunately. All right, we have some interaction, so we can keep this. Uh, unfortunately, this is a Mystic Dispute instead of a Spell Pierce, so we can't protect our Stoneforge Mystic with it. But I think we get rid of this Soul Guide Lantern, most likely. Maybe the Pithing Needle. We're definitely keeping this hand. And we're definitely keeping this chunk of it. These are both kind of good if they have Ren and Six. I think Needle's probably a little bit better. So let's get rid of Soul Guide Lantern. My opponent had a sideboard mistake, apparently. So we'll see what that was, or maybe we won't. Oh, Leyline of the Void, okay. I mean, that card's not that bad against us since we have Graveyard Matters stuff like, uh, maybe, maybe that wasn't the, the uh, sideboard mistake, actually. Have they seen Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry? I don't think they have. Hmm. So I could be mean and just go straight for Pithing Needle here. I think that might be exactly what I do, actually. Yeah, let's be mean and just go straight for Pithing Needle. I can name Renin Six if they crack their fetch land, and if they don't crack their fetch land, I'll just name Scalding Turn Easy Peasy. All right, they crack. Renin Six. Tapped Dwarven Mine for our opponent on turn two. Okay. So I feel like if we run out Stoneforge Mystic here, it's just going to get bolted. So maybe we just wait and play Springleaf Drum. It feels a little goofy, but I think that might be what we do here. Because they did hold up mana. Yeah, let's just go Springleaf Drum go. Plan on getting Rogren Trium. Or possibly an untapped blue source if we get something that we can counter. Kind of plays Bloodstained Mire. Alright, Crack Flooded Strand, they didn't do anything on their turn 3, which is good, it means that they're not necessarily progressing what they're trying to do. Let's get Rogren Triumph so we have Fixing, we draw Pyrite Spell Bomb. Hmm, do we just play out the Pyrite Spell Bomb? Maybe that's the case? I should, uh, I should have held up the Mystic Dispute, I don't know what I'm doing here. Hmm... Well, I didn't really need to, I guess, with the Pirate Spell Bomb, because now I can use Spell Bomb to kill a dwarf. If they're trying to turn a dwarf into an Archon. Hmm. Very interesting matchup. Kind of gets the steam vents, shocks it in. Looks like we might get to use dispute here if they're going for Prismari Command. Aha, ha, ha, fuck you. <laughs> no. 
All right. What you got this turn? Fable the Mirror Breaker. Okay. Because their guy gets a treasure when he attacks, I want to go ahead and kill him with Pirate Spell Bomb. Because I'm going to have to... I'm going to want to kill him next turn anyway, regardless of if they try to turn him into an Archon. All right, so let's play Stoneforge Mystic now. So they have to choose between progressing their board or killing our guy, depending on what they draw. Yes. Let's get... Well, I could just get Lightning Greaves and put that into play too. Honestly, that's kind of fine. Because then I can go Lightning Greaves on Stoneforge Mystic, get Yorion, reset Stoneforge Mystic. Because Yorion is choose any number, it doesn't target, right? Yeah. Let's get Lightning Greaves. Fuck it. Arid Mesa getting a basic planes to conserve life total. So now they can't use spot removal on this. And we'll attack them for one. Show them what's up. <laughs> yeah. Get got. <laughs> Alright, they had a land, so it looks like they play Creativity here. All right, so what does Teferi mean for me? I could reset their Fable of the Mirror Breaker so that they can't creativity. Because apparently that's what's holding them off from what we understand. I could actually go Teferi, bounce something, and then also either play that something or put Yorion into my hand. So I think that's the play. Play tough. Bounce. You. Play you, Companion Yorion into our hand. All right, pass the turn. Opponent plays Fable the Mirror Breaker out again. That's good. Fine by me. We draw Thopter Foundry. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. One, two, three, four, five. I don't really want to discard Thopter Foundry, is the issue. Oh, I won't be discarding Thopter Foundry. I'll be discarding Sword of the Meek. Okay. So, yeah, we play Yorion. Hold on. We play out Esper Sentinel. Then we play Yorion. Boop. 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 Yorion comes in. You. 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 Uh. 
I think I want to change the one on Renin 6 to Besage you, because I don't care about Renin 6 as much anymore. So let's do that. Lightning Greaves on Yorion. I can attack for four. Haha. -ha. And get back our triggers. Naming Besaju. Who endures? Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Yes. Getting Sword of the Meek. And now I think we won. Because we have a reset to Fairy that we can use to bounce their stuff. We have a Sword of the Meek that we can discard if they do play an Archon here. They discard Archon to Fable. And then we can follow up with Doctor Sword combo. I'm going to take the two. I'll place a land. So if they have creativity, they can make me discard both of these cards, and I'll be down the Thopter Foundry. Oh, I, damn, he didn't attack at me. He attacked at Teferi. I should have blocked that. That was stupid. Oh, well. Opponent can get two Archons, make us discard both the cards in our hand, so it's not really worth having the Esper Sentinel anymore. That's unfortunate. Maybe they'll let us draw? I don't think they're going to let us draw. Sad. Okay. Well, now we're in a tough spot again because we have to discard both of these. Fuck, he has a play line in play anyway, so it, it didn't matter. Alright, well... I'm not good at playing this deck. <laughs> I'm gonna admit it. <laughs> Alright, our opponent deserve, had deserved to win this game anyway, so it's kind of fine. Uh, Portable Hole is not going to do it for us. Hmm... We technically get one turn. This portable hole is just going to get discarded from our hand if we don't play it out, so we might as well play it and pass. We're gonna lose we're gonna lose the Yorion and the Safari when they attack. GG's to our opponent. Flips over reflection of Kiki Jiki. They probably have a Bolt or a Renin 6 or something that can deal damage to me here. Actually, no, they're just attacking for a million anyway, so it doesn't matter. Good games to our opponent. <laughs> I can't do math. Oh my god. I was only doing the uh the math of the drains. Anyway. Yeah, that deck's really fun. Um I had lots of fun piloting it. That being said, I did not do very well with it. I think it's mostly just to do with uh, me not having as much practice as is necessary to do well with this deck. Because there are so many activated abilities, so many options that you have all the time because of the things that you can tutor for and the amounts of different lines that you can cause any game to take. That it's just very, very skill intensive. So I think so. I definitely made plenty of misplays over the course of that uh, those matches. I definitely got to do some cute interactions and have some fun with the deck, regardless. Like we beat Living End. Not not every deck can do that very well. Uh, we I think we went one and two against everything that we lost against. Yeah, we did. So there's at least a chance that we had against everything, and then I sort of punted everything away at some point. But yeah, definitely try out this deck if this is up your alley. Uh, we didn't get to see much of Sarah Paragon, which is a little unfortunate, but it's pretty sweet. It's uh, sort of like a Crucible effect, but it can also get back artifacts, and that's pretty nice. But yeah, Fiddlebender. I'll see you in the next one.
Hey everyone, Shoe Nice again. Well, basically, go subscribe to Tez's YouTube channel. And for those who made it to the end of the video, thank you.